Good afternoon, dear brethren, sisters, saints of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Good afternoon. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. Please get your copy of the authorized version and read along with me today. Please read along with me because guess what? I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. And you need to see what we're looking at. So it's imperative for you that you read along in the scriptures that we are going to be looking at. Be a Berean. Okay? Be a Berean. There are those devils out there. Who say, oh, the Bereans were lost. Well, uh, they had a lot more sense than most of the Christians do to at least search the scriptures daily. Okay? Whether these things be so. All right? Besides, they received it with all readiness of mind. They weren't like combative trying to find a way to justify themselves. But they wanted truth. As opposed to most people, especially Christians today, who want nothing to do with truth. Okay? Read along with me, word for word. Verse by verse, okay? Keep an eye on me. Don't trust me. Oh, trust this. The sword of the Spirit. I, I agree. Not one thing in this world can you trust. Not man. Not beast. Not woman. This. The authorized version you can trust. Amen. 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 First John chapter two. Uh, brethren, this is going to be some milk, but this is intended for these antinomianism people, the antinomianists or whatever. What's that? Free grace, people. You know, there is this pond scum, inept, wicked devil who um, put that word out there in one of his videos. And unfortunately, eh. but then again, leave it to that devil who is scriptural, scripturally inept to number one, define what it is. Or number two, to refute it scripturally. And if that stupid devil, who is not stupid, but is, um, he has to use someone else, and he just puts it on their screen and plagiarizes, and let them do the talking, and he sits there coughing, burping, and farting in the background. Okay? All right? It's really interesting to see how the devils do this theatric of uh, combating one another in order to draw attention and views and whatnot. It's very, it's very entertaining. Okay, but like I said, for the saint, this is milk. But for you people, especially you free grace people who have been deceived, and this satanic grace that you call the grace of God, you use as a license to sin. Check, don't don't do this. But check out some of these free grace uh, live streaming people where. Just profanity just rolls off the lips. It, it's, it truly is antinomianism. Every one of you free gracer people who are in a, a position where you teach this stuff are antinomianists. You really are. So, sleazy believists, which I like that phrase, Fake gracers are antinomianists. Or I'm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. It doesn't matter. 16 years, the Lord had, you know, I've been saved for 16 years. And just recently, I, I learned about this thing. It's like, but then again, the Lord's having us to refute everything that it is. Hmm. Anyway, First John chapter 2. And brethren, saints. It is in my honest opinion that 
this antinomianism is the most dangerous heresy that is being promulgated today in these last days. It really is, in my honest opinion. I believe this is the most dangerous heresy that there is today. And it makes sense. Uh, so uh, coming up on to the redemption of the purchased possession, whenever that may be, I personally believe that this is the most dangerous heresy because it's infected virtually all the flavors of this disgusting Christianity. This was not the video I thought I was going to do today, but you'll find this out, brother. You'll wake up with uh, something was like, okay, today, like you said, this is for a uh, specific brother. You sent me that link about the uh, word Christian, which is, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I thought that was going to be today. Well, it's not. <laughs> he, he's in charge, not me. First John chapter 2, enough of my... Because that's what the enemy does. It's blah, 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 blah. All that devil did when he brought this up was uh, rant and rave and uh, be snarky and sarcastic with no scriptural re refutation of anything they were saying. Just, uh, just disgusting. First John chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 22. Right away. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Antinomianism is basically a license to sin so that these people who save themselves by their own belief can engage in sin and love the world. We're going to see this. We're going to see this because we're going to look at Wikipedia about this and the link for that if you're curious. Uh, will be in the description box for you, okay? Let's continue. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist. We're looking at Antichrist for a specific reason. Antinomianism. Okay? Anti. What does it mean to be anti? What does it mean? It means to be against, but it also means to be to replace. Example, antiperspirant. Pit putty. Antiperspirant. Against your sweat, but replace it with a usually a feminine stink, okay? Which the Shemites in Japan have uh, uh, a what was it? Um, a not a on the books law uh, about you know offenses or whatever because of pit putty, men wearing perfume or something. Anyway, anyway, but that's an example of what it is to be anti. So antichrist. To be against and to replace. Which free gracers, antinomiasts, antinomiasts, or whatever you, however you pronounce it, I don't care if I'm mispronouncing it. Okay? I really don't. <laughs> That's what these guys are. They are antichrist. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, that antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrists twice so far antichrist okay keep that in mind whereby we know that it is the last time look all over YouTube there are very few saints who are preaching the truth <laughs> very few and many that you think are are followers of men and lovers of tradition having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away, people who put men on pedestals and follow the teachings of men and defend them. Okay? <laughs> Deck the halls, buddy. All right? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. The, the falling away. Falling away is exactly this. 
There are those heretics out there who tell you that the falling away are saved brethren that get messed up. No, that is not the falling away. The falling away are those who were claiming to be of us. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Okay? That's what the falling away is. You do the research about falling away in Scripture, falling away, falling away, whatever. Um, it's not saved people that get messed up. The falling away are those who were never of us, but they were made manifest that they were not all of us. That's what the falling away is. Someone who is refuting that is trying to protect themselves as being known as a heretic. Okay? But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye understand, and ye know all things. I have not written, uh, what do we read? Uh, uh, verse 22. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Know the truth. Know the truth. You have an unction from the Holy One. That is a reference unto the Spirit of Truth, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, you know, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within the saved believer. That's the unction that is being talked about, okay? We have the Father within us, okay? And the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, He is the way, the truth, and the life, okay? Remember that. And he says, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth. He is not making a reference unto the head knowledge. But this know is a relational. How can you tell that? Verse 20. The unction. Okay. Who is a liar? But he that denieth Jesus is the Christ. The anointed one. Now devils do that all of the time. Okay, yes they do. Yes they do. But see, they don't know Christ by Him living within them. Okay? And we're going to touch on this a little bit. Because there used to be this thing which I was a part of a couple years ago. Where it was being taught that if you could merely say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. That would prove that you're saved. No, all that proves is that you can say that. Okay, and they go to 1 John 4, which we are going to be looking at today. And they also go to a place in 1 Corinthians about Jesus is the Lord. Okay, I forget what that is. 1 Corinthians, I'll find it for the description box. Okay, and then 1 John, and you get out of it. 1 John 4 will also be in the description box for you for more uh, research on your own time. Okay? All that proves is that you can say it. But see, they can say it, but the way they live, the way they behave, is contrary to what they profess. Okay? So, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Trinitarians love this. Well, we didn't, don't deny God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, yes, you are, because God is only one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? You deny the true God and replace him, Antichrist, with a God who is not God, consisting of three persons. That is Satan. We've talked about that many times. Okay? Now go to 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, verses 1 on to verse 6. Beloved, believe not every lowercase s spirit, but try this lowercase s spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And that's the key, false prophets, to understanding this whole thing about Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Prophets, those who are speaking, those who are teaching, okay? That is what this is regarding too. And also note that we are to try the spirits, lowercase s, okay? Uh, we shall know them by their fruits. We are to search the scriptures daily, whether these things are so. We are to judge others by the same standard that we judge ourselves. 
We are to judge others. We are fruit inspectors. Okay? And see, lost people don't want their fruits inspected. Okay? Remember that. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the capital S Spirit of God. Capital S Spirit is significant because it is reference unto God himself. You know, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body, just like you and I are. Okay? Every lowercase s spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. What is this in regards to? False prophets, those who are prophesying. Okay? Prophesying today is simply, it's not like Old Testament prophesying where revelation, new revelation was being given. It is, we have the completed canon of scripture, the perfect standard, the Lord who dwells within the saved saint speaks through the scripture to you, the saint, and the spirits identify. That is prophesying today. Okay? It's not like the Old Testament. All right? And verse 3, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Okay? All right? So see, this is for those who are doing the preaching and the teaching. Okay? Not a smoking gun uh, litmus test that uh, just because you could say it means that you are. Doesn't mean that at all. I fell into that for a while. The Lord rebuked me through the scripture, through brethren, and even some twisted uh, mental nut jobs who believe that they see the, saw the Lord and continue to see Jesus. Woohoo! Okay? Anyway. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Question so far, have you seen the Antichrist in anything we've looked at thus far? The word Antichrist appears five times. One, two, three, four, five. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Just like it says in Isaiah 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. You go look that up in the authorized version. Okay, do you see the Antichrist thus far? <laughs> no, you don't. Well, what does that mean? Right? That's not important. Words, words don't have meaning. Words aren't important, right? <clears throat> anyway, let's continue. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, God the Father dwells within the same believer. They are of the world, antinomians. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Oh yeah, if you can just believe and receive and save yourself by just believing without any brokenness, contrition, or, or calling on the name of the Lord, no fear of the Lord, okay? Yeah, and have your cake and eat it too. Of course people are going to gobble that up, but when you got people... Who have brains enough to be like, well, wait a minute, something don't make sense here. Okay? They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. And see, this here is giving you the context of what is being talked about in verse 1. Okay? We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. See, verse 6 describes what verse 1 is talking about, about the false prophets and the spirits identifying. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I believe that is. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, or it might be 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, yeah, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 on to verse 4. Uh, let's read verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we're all in the ministry of reconciliation, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully like the antinomians do. Free gracers, 
but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the little g God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. Let's read verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, just believe and receive is preaching yourself, okay? But Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Verses um, uh, 5 and 6 in 1 John chapter 4, they are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Who is the God of this quail? Little G God. Oh, that'd be Lucifer. The, the, the old serpent. The dragon. Satan. Okay? Alright? We are of God. Verse 6 and 1 John 4. He that knoweth God. Relational. Because they know God here, but not relational. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the lowercase s spirit of truth and the lowercase s spirit of error. That is denoting one that is imparted. Okay? Verse 3 in first Corinthians and 2 Corinthians 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Okay? Alright? Now, go to 2 John and we're going to be reading verses 7 on to verse 11. 7-11. Stop it. For many deceivers are entered into the world, false prophets, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. The fifth and final time that antichrist appears in scripture. Question, have you been reading along with, them, uh, with me thus far? Do you see the Antichrist? Have you seen it? The, verbatim, the Antichrist. Have you seen it? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Doctrine of Christ, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that Jesus Christ is God the Father, that God is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. A lot of people, a lot of heretics will come to this and twist it, and try to make it as uh, trying to make, for example, the Sermon on the Mount salvific and doctrinal for us today as pertaining to salvation. And they will twist that. Um, beg your pardon, I'm writing this down. And they will twist, twist that in the doctrine of Christ. Meaning that we salvifically, doctrinally today in this dispensation, have to do what Christ said on the Sermon on the Mount, in the Sermon on the Mount, doctrinally for salvation today. That's where you get these guys who say you got to forgive in order to be forgiven. Okay, you got to love your enemies and that kind of stuff. We love our enemies by giving them the truth of Scripture, okay? That, you got to watch out for that. The doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of Christ. Okay, very simple. Go to 1 Timothy, I believe that is uh, 1 Timothy 3.16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the capital S spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay? All right, uh, and let me see. There was other things that we could have gone to, but the doctrine of Christ, all right, is number one, knowing who Christ actually is, the Father, but also two, in knowing that, okay, that we preach on God, 
comprised of spirit, soul, and body. One God. Not three persons that make one God. Okay? Alright? That He is God. That He is our Savior. That there is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Alright? And see, you guys who are Trinitarians with your one God and three persons, that is Antichrist. Against and to replace. Okay? Watch out for these people that come to this about the doctrine of Christ. And what they always do this. They go, for example, to the Sermon on the Mount and say, we have to do that today in this dispensation for salvation. And that is not the case. Because the death, burial, and resurrection had yet to happen when the Lord spake the Sermon on the Mount. And that is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. Okay, watch out for that. Let's continue. He that abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, that he has got the Father. He, he that, excuse me, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. And Jesus Christ plainly, clearly referred to himself as the Father. He is the Father. Okay? If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. And you see this happening with these stupid live streaming uh, Christians, where profan brother, how could you be in the same thing with these so-called brethren who have no restraint on their filthy mouths and use profanity. Stop that. Stay away from them, man. Come on. You know that you know this, brother. You know this. You know this. Okay? It is not a subject of grace when you are condoning by your presence, my dear beloved, foul language. It would be a better testimony unto our Father. You okay? You you want to do that? Okay. The minute you hear that these people say f bombs while you are present, it would be a better testimony unto our Father if you're like, number one, hey, dude, stop that, shut up. And if they continue, click, get out of there. I'm just saying, okay? I'm just saying. So we see Antichrist five times. Psalm 36. Psalm 36. And this was the deciding factor of what the what video was going to be done today. Because like I said, I woke up, brother sent me a really good link about some guy using the Greek to justify calling yourself a Christian. We will get into that. I thought that was going to be today, but no. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Psalm 36, verses 1 on to verse 4. Verses 1 on to verse 2 to start. Light, very light expository here. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. Yeah, the antinomians, they fear not God. You can tell by their live streams and the, the profanity that comes out of their mouth. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Proverbs 14, just one verse. Proverbs 14, verse 9. Fools who say in their heart there is no God, but they are their own God. See, no God, capital G, but a little God themselves. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Make a mock at sin. Verse 2 in Psalm 36. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Hmm. Love the sinner, but hate the sin. Jacob have I loved, but Esau I have hated. Perfect hatred. You hate my father. I hate you with perfect hatred. Okay? Alright? 
we, you know, pr praise the Lord, uh, hopefully <laughs> there are no more videos coming against that ridiculous universalism. You have to be pretty dense to fall for that, or pretty wicked, okay? But look at verse 2, he flattereth himself in his own eyes. I saved myself by my own belief. I'm not obligated to keep the morality of the law. Ooh, I'm a, we're, we're going to I'm going to show you this subtle, real subtle, real subtle. The word verse three. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. Just believe and receive. Prayer is a work. <laughs> Repentance is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Just believe and receive. Don't worry about everything because you save yourself by your own belief. Therefore, you have a license to do whatever because you're sealed until the day of redemption. Because you save yourself by your own belief. There's no brokenness, no contrition, no fear of the Lord. The, the lesser hasn't called upon the greater, but they are the greater calling down the lesser God. These guys are disgusting. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath, left, he hath left off to be wise, fear the Lord, and to do good. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. He's left off to be, do wise, be wise. Wise, fearing the Lord. Genesis 3. One hundred five. Now the serpent was more subtle. than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Smooth as snap. <laughs> and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, Ye may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. He said that. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. He didn't say that. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Your eyes shall be opened. But your mind will be blinded. Because you are your own standard. You are your own God. You are your own salvation when you just believe receive. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. Yea, hath God said? Hmm. He hath left off to be wise, fear the Lord, and to do good. And there is none good but who? God. And when you're your own God, then, and like I've said, this is, this is uh, evident in every antinomianist or whatever, free gracer, uh, sooner or later, I'm better than so-and-so. I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Verse 4. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. And what's evil? These antinomianists call evil good and good evil. These antinomianists have a license to sin. And someone, a saint, who comes around preaching the true Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures, they call that evil. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He shall be his God. He has God said. He abhorreth not evil. And we are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, verses 1 on verse 9. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. Hmm. 
Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. We're reading on to verse 9. For their hearts studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Or mischief, whatever. Hmm. When you, I, I, I don't, because I've, <laughs> I've seen enough. When you give your time to hear what these antinomianists, these disgusting free gracers preach, um, they study destruction and their lips talk of mischief. They come up with all colorful, creative, and inventive ways to circumvent the scripture, to justify themselves, to justify sin, just as if I themselves. I mean, it's full of wonder. And when you got pond scum devils that can point that out in them, it's like, wow. Okay, let's continue. Through wisdom, there are two wisdoms, is in house building. And by understanding, it is established. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And departing from evil is understanding. Okay? Building your house upon a rock. The Lord Jesus Christ. These guys, antinomianists, build their house upon sand. And it sinks. They have no understanding departing from evil. And the wisdom that they have is earthly, sensual, devilish. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches, that pearl of great price, the precious blood of the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. A wise man is strong, someone who fears the Lord. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. Wise counsel, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? And in the multitude of counselors there is safety, being amongst our own, being amongst uh, many brethren. But then again, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, used many hands to bring about the scriptures, didn't he not? But there's only one author, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Wisdom is too high for fool. fool who says in his heart there is no God. Uh, you know, uh, while we're here, Proverbs 28... Proverbs 28, um, verses 25 and 26. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, just like the antinomians do, the free gracers. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fast. Me made fat, excuse me. Their faith is in their faith, not in the Lord, because they don't believe in the true Lord anyway. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely in the fear of the Lord, he shall be delivered. Go back to Proverbs 24, verse 7. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. Verse 8. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thought of foolishness is sin. And the scorner is an abomination to men. When you got self-theists bashing, rightfully so, the antinomian for their believe and receive disgustingness, it's like, you're supposed to be a Christian, but yet you're acting worse than I am. Romans chapter 1 Romans chapter 1 verses 28 on to 32 like I said saint this is on you and I is milk but these guys and you know what doesn't matter as long as the Lord has given me breath and this is what he wants me to do I am Lord willing going to constantly attack this heretical teaching of free grace, antinomianism, which is of Satan, an ecumenical creation of the devil, which is damning so many people to hell. They know not God. And 
even, verses 28 under the close in Romans 1, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Their minds are blinded. They have eyes to see, right? But their minds are blinded. Because they are their own standard. They are their own God. And like I said, watch some of these. If you can stomach it, listen to some of these uh, free grace live streamers. It's like, you know, you watch, it's like watching a Hollywood movie. Worldly, carnal, profane. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. Debate. Yeah, that's all they do. Deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. They just come up with stuff. Disobedient to parents, without understanding, departing from evil. Covenant breakers, without natural affection. Implacable, unmerciful. Who knowing had knowledge, the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, and the wages of sin is death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 31 on to verse 34. I protest to your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Die to myself. <laughs> die physically. Die to the world. Hmm. These antinomians, they're not saved. And brother, brother, we are to be fruit inspectors. These antinomians deny the true Jesus Christ. They are their own gods who save themselves by their own belief. If these guys actually had the Father within them, and they do what they do on their large streams, okay, to deliver, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, okay? Come on now. Don't fall for that. All right? All right. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, uh, a natural brute beasts, unregenerate, unregenerate people, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. And that's exactly what antinomians um, preach. Okay, live it up. Don't worry about it. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now remember, communications is not just verbal. Body language. How you behave. The way you serve your God reflects Him. The way the antinomian serves his God, Satan, reflects Him in these free grace pond scum. I, I you know, there is... Only one antinomian free gracer who I actually give respect. Only one. The rest of them I have no respect for at all. None. There's only one who I actually give any respect to. Only one. Okay? And some question me about that. It's like, Brad, why do you get that? Update? At least, at least, that guy gives his time to hear the truth in order to combat it. Okay? All right? At least that guy never hit, uh, at least that guy never pretended to be anything but he but what he is. Okay? I respect someone who's who will do that. Okay? I respect someone who does never pretended to be anything but what they are. Okay? You're a devil, you're going to hell. But hey, you know, if you're at least up front in that, it's like, okay, all right? Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Look at some of these live streaming Christians. Don't. But I mean, if you do, 
It's like, oh, wow. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Yeah, they don't have the knowledge of God. Because the knowledge that these guys have are based off of what wisdom? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Uh, Galatians 6, just, just one verse. In Galatians 6, verse 7. Galatians 6, verse 7, one verse. Not five, Brad. <laughs> Galatians 6. Hmm. I'm in Ephesians. Excuse me. Excuse me. Galatians 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. As so many of you are. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Jude, Jude verse 4, one verse, Jude 4, we were warned about these people, Jude 4, for there are certain men crept in, unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ordained how? Because they made their choice to be their own God, ungodly men, <laughs> okay? Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. One God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. So we see here what? Lasciviousness is what? Denying the Lord God. And most of these antinomians, I, I have yet to meet one who isn't a Trinitarian. You're denying the true God, who is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that make one God. Lasciviousness. We see here, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. One and the same, not two different persons. Okay? Lasciviousness. Mark 7. Mark 7. One. Are you doing that? You'll see. One. Mark chapter 7. Oh, Mark 7, verses 20 on to verse 23. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. This is spoken while under the law, before the death, burial, and resurrection. Under the law, it was by faith and works. Eternal security was not there. The death, burial, and resurrection and the blood on the cross had yet to be shed. Okay? There was no eternal security under the law. <laughs> Please, don't fall for the lie that there was. Okay? For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, Thought of foolishness of sin, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts. The thief cometh not but to kill and to destroy. Who boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way? Thefts, covetousness, and the Lord abhorreth the covetous. Wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye. That's interesting. An evil eye, the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life and the pride of the flesh or lust of the flesh. We already read that in First John chapter 2. Okay? An evil eye. Is your the eye evil, therefore, because I am righteous? What's that? Kind of bright eyes that. Alright? Blasphemy. Pride. Foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. God knows my heart. Yeah. 
Yeah, we, we're going, brother. We're going. Yeah, he sure does. Again, as I've said to you on many a myriad of times, when someone, a Christian, says to you, God knows my heart, mark them, they are trying to justify sin. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. Hmm. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Lasciviousness. So you see here in Mark 7 what lasciviousness is surrounded by. Okay? 2 Corinthians 12, verses 19 on to 21. Two. Brad, why are you, what's with that? You'll see. Antichrist appears five times the number of death. Lasciviousness. Twice so far. 2 Corinthians, where are we at? 12. Verses 9 on to verse 21. And he said unto me, 2 Corinthians 12. Oh, yeah, on to verse 21. Uh, yeah. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Hold on, brethren. I, I'm looking... Um, Ah, there it is. It's in, okay, reading context. And he said unto me, 19 under 21, excuse me. Okay, I'm sorry. Again, in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 19 under 21. I can't pause it because I have OBS keyed up. Okay? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God and Christ, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. Look at that verse. Excuse ourselves unto you. The antinomian does nothing but excuse sin. But we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. They do it for your destruction. We saints do it for the edifying of the body of Christ. For I fear... Lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not. Lest there be now, pay attention, debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults. Unless when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. Again, as in Mark chapter 7, look at what lasciviousness is surrounded by and as we saw in Jude, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, which antinomians do, free gracers do. Okay? Galatians 5, verses 16 on to 21. Galatians 5, verses 16 on to 21. This I say then, walk in the capitalist spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's a decision, okay? God is not holding you at gunpoint, forcing you to walk according to his statutes. You've got to make the right decision to do what's right according to scripture, okay? God's not forcing you to walk according to his statutes, okay? And he certainly is not doing it for you in the regard of making you walk a certain way. You have to make the right decision or else you're a Calvinist, a robot. Okay? This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
For the flesh lusteth against the capital S spirit, and the capital S spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. We're going to look in Romans 7 here a little later too, so you know. But if ye be led of the capital S spirit, ye are not under the law. Hinge, verse 18, because we're going to touch on that later. Okay? What does this mean we are going to define? All right? Because antinomians are against the morality of the law. The morality. We'll explain a little bit later. Let's continue. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Okay, look at the context of thus far what we have seen lasciviousness in. Okay? And we got, what? One, two, three, four. Okay? Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, which is spiritual. Saints mess up all the time. Saints can do those things, yes. But see, on a premise of just believe and receive, jumping over repentance, contrition, fear of the Lord, and calling upon His name. Okay? All right, now Ephesians 4, 17, on to the blows. No, on to verse uh, uh, 24. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds. Gentiles who know not God, in the vanity of their minds. You're saved because you just believed and received without true brokenness, without any contrition, nor fear of the Lord. And of course, calling on the name of the Lord is a work to you. Okay? Having the understanding darkened, departing from evil. Okay? Understanding darkened. Well, hey, all things are lawful for me. I can do anything because I'm justified by this fictitious satanic grace which is a lasciviousness a license to sin being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart yeah because they say in their heart there is no God they are their own gods who being past feeling have given themselves over unto Lasciviousness. Now look at this. To work all uncleanness with greediness, likened unto covetousness. Uncleanness. Hold your place there and let's reference again the final and sixth appearance of lasciviousness, which we started out with Jude 4. Okay? For there are certain men crept in unawares who, are, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm, go back to Ephesians 4. Okay, where, on to verse 21. Okay. Verse 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Don't worry about sinning because you save yourself by your own belief. Just believe and receive. You're delivered from the morality of the law. That's the, and that's something that these guys do very well. They confuse. God is not the author of confusion. We'll, we'll see here in a little bit. 
But ye have not so learned Christ. Which one? <laughs> Which Christ are you talking about, buddy? Huh? Which one? If so be that ye have heard him. How do you hear the Lord today? Through the scripture. And have been taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus. That ye put off. Concerning the former conversation. The old man. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Hmm. Let's read on to verse 24. And be renewed in the spirit. Lord case us. One that is imparted. Of your mind. And that ye put on the new man. Which, is af which after God. Is created in righteousness. And true holiness. You have to make the right decisions in your life. To walk according... And see, when you make the choice to... Like, I'm going to do what God says in the Scriptures. As He did with Pharaoh, let him along. He will lead you along in that. Okay? Alright? See, these antinomians seek how to live their life according to the world apart from Scripture. And they only go to Scripture to find loopholes and twist it and distort it in order to justify their sin. That's when they run into, you know, well, rightly dividing, which is uh, uh, being dispensational, meaning that salvation changes in the dispensation, but they say God's grace changes in the dispensation. Stupid. Stupid. Okay? First Peter... Chapter 4, verses 3 on to verse 6 now. 1 Peter chapter 4. Lasciviousness appears six times. Hmm. So Antichrist appears five times, the number of death. And lasciviousness, which anti antinomian antinomianism is, free grace is, lasciviousness, a license to sin, appears six times. Just like in a Bible, the capital W word only appears six times, where in the scripture, seven. Don't miss that. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 3 and verse 6. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, Revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Some of these guys, you know, talk about getting drunk as if it's no big thing. Okay? Wherein they think it not strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right. Speaking evil of you. As the antinomians speak of us, the saints. Okay? Call us work salvationists. No, you guys are the work salvationists. Okay? You're saving yourselves by your own belief. And justifying your sin all the way you uh, uh, all the way you go, okay. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick, alive, and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, dead in trespasses and sins, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Lowercase s, one that is imparted spirit. Hmm. hmm. That's an interesting verse. So, what does this mean? The gospel is preached unto those who are dead. Okay? Dead in trespasses and sins. Again, as we already read in First Corinthians and uh, Second Corinthians chapter 4, child of wrath, child of disobedience. Okay? You hear the true gospel, the true God one time and reject it that they might be judged according to men in the flesh hmm so lasciviousness appears six times hmm. interesting now what others should have done but can't do because they're lost devils antinomianism like I said, I, 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 you know, the Lord has had me doing things to uh, refute and to expose the 
vile, rank, disgusting heresy, which is known as free grace today. But this, um, this antinomianism, I, whatever, you know, it's, all right. Antinomianism. This is on Wikipedia. The link for this will be in the description box for you to look uh, at your leisure, okay? Now, get a load of this, all right? Get a load of this. Antinomianism, ancient Greek, whatever, 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 is any view which rejects laws or legalism and argues against moral, religious, or social norms. Latin mores. Or is at least considered to do so. The term has both religious and secular meanings. Hmm. Legal, legalism, legalistic is not found in scripture. In some Christian belief systems, an antinomian is one who takes the principle, now pay attention, pay close attention to this. Saint, brother, see if you, I, 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 I was talking to our beloved yesterday, yesterday, over the phone, and I asked him, granted, he, you know, our dear brother, uh, pray for our dear brother Alexander B. Hartley, he got off. He, his plate is full at the moment, okay? But I asked him, it's like, did you catch this? Let's see if you catch this there, saint. In some Christian belief systems, an antinomian is one who takes the principles, the principle of salvation by faith and divine grace to the point of asserting that the saved are not bound to follow the moral law contained in the Ten Commandments. Antinomians believe that faith alone guarantees eternal salvation in heaven regardless of one's actions. Okay? Did you catch that, by the way? Catch what? Let's read this again to a certain point. Let's see if you catch it now. In some Christian belief systems, an antinomian is one who takes the principle of salvation by faith and divine grace. Okay, there it is. Did you catch? Do you catch that? It might be. What am I catching? The antinomian is what? Just believe and receive. And we are not saved by keeping the law for salvation. Okay? That part is true. We're gonna expound, we're gonna expound on that. But do you catch what I, what we just read there? Let's look at it again one more time, then we'll then we'll talk about it. In some Christian belief systems, an antinomian is one who takes the principle of salvation by faith and divine grace. Do you see it? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 10. You're, now you're going to see it. Do you see it? Look at verse 8 in Ephesians 2. Do you see? For by what's mentioned first. What's mentioned first? For by grace are ye saved through faith by faith through faith there's a difference ah the Jews say by faith you know we talked about that before but right here do you see it now an antinomian by faith and divine grace Faith comes first before his grace to the free gracer. Because they are their own gods. They are the greater calling upon the lesser to bring down the lesser who is the true God onto their level, making them their own gods. Do you see? Did you, ca did you catch that? 
So, and think about it. The antinomian, the free gracer, just believe and receive. Their faith is in their faith. They have it backwards. Scripture. For by his grace, for by grace, unmerited favor, are you say are ye saved through faith? And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. What are those works? The works of the law, lest any man should boast. You see that? That's smooth, boy. Smooth and subtle. Oh, smooth. That's Mr. Fig type smooth. Okay? That guy's a smooth cat. All right? For we are his workmanship, referring to the new creature, Christ in you, the hope of glory, sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, not to be saved or stay saved, but walking according to the scripture as ambassadors for Christ, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them as ambassadors for Christ. Right away. Again, to the free gracer, the antinomianist. Faith comes before his grace. You are your own gods. Your faith is in your faith. You save yourselves, you disgusting devils. The distinction between antinomian and other Christian views on moral law is that the antinomians believe that obedience to the law is motivated by an eternal principle flowing from belief rather than any external compulsion. Antinomianism has been considered to teach that believers have a license to sin. And exactly that's what the, it is. I mean, I rest my case. Check out these free gracers here on YouTube. When they curse, when they talk about oral sex, when they talk about, beg your pardon, when they talk about debauchery, drunkenness, reveling. Okay? Profanity, just without restraint. Just believe and receive. And that future sins do not require repentance. Johannes, uh, whatever that is, to whom antinomianism was first attributed, stated, if you sin, be happy. It should have no consequence. Right there. And that's exactly what free grace does. Like, you don't have to, like, Lord, I'm sorry I did that. You're eternally secure if you go the way of the cross, which is broken, contrition, fear, calling upon the name of the Lord, which these guys deny. These guys are not saved who preach this, brethren. Brother, I love you. you. You should distance yourself from these people. All of you should. Okay? Now, we're not going to read this whole thing, obviously. Uh, we're just going to continue reading. And then we're going to de refute some of this in Scripture. And consequence. No consequence. Eternal consequence. But see... There's no fear of God before their eyes. The way you serve the Lord reflects Him. Okay? An antinomian has no fear of God because they have a license to sin. Antinomianism was generally considered a heresy. And you look at these channels, who I'm not even going to name, okay? And these people uh, who purport this nonsense... But see, they're against the moral obligation of the law. Moral. Hmm? Let's continue. Examples of antinomianism being uh, confronted by the religious establishment include Martin Luther's critique of antinomianism 
and the antinomian controversy of the 7th century Massachusetts Bay Colony. The charge of antinomianism has been leveled by at Reformed, Baptist, and some non-denominational churches. Absolutely. By extension, the word antinomian is used to describe views in religions other than Christianity. This is true. Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, okay. The 10th century Sufi mystic Allah was accused of antinomianism. The, the term is also used to describe certain practices of traditions and Frankism. <laughs> I'm thinking about you there with that, that dear sunken eyed Canadian. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm, I'm, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Aspects of Varjan Tatra that include sexual rituals are sometimes described as antinomian for Buddha. Okay, whatever. You got the gist. You got the gist. Okay? You got the gist. But notice that it's said are against the moral implications of the law. Moral. Hmm. The law of the Ten Commandments is not binding salvifically. But do we disregard the morality of it? You watch some of these antinomian free gracers, uh, that's exactly what they do. They have a license to sin. What said the scripture? Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. Now see, the charge that will be leveled upon myself uh, for going to the scripture like this, uh, they're going to say that you're trying to teach works for salvation. No, no. We're going to see that's clearly not the case. But see, what these guys are doing is removing any the morality of it. Morality. There's a difference between morality and legality. Big difference. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19, on to verse 22. For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. See, when the Lord saves us, we are not bound to the law for salvation. Okay? For salvation. Are we removed from the obligation of any morality that the law um, instills? We're going to see... No. But see, to the antinomian free gracer, they blur that morality with legality. Okay? Very subtle. Very wicked. To them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. What does that mean? Does that mean that we are not to observe, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, hmm? thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not bear false witness? Conveniently, a lot of the Bibles 
I'm, I'm uh, loosely quoting uh, Romans 13. Take out, thou shalt not bear false witness. Hmm. Isn't that something? And did Paul, for example, Christianity teaches you in order to win the world, you got to be like the world. Some will come to this, see, well, Paul became like a Jew. He was a Hebrew, okay? Or that when you're in Rome, do as the Romans do. So in order to preach to sodomites, become a sodomite. In order to preach to a drunkard, become a drunkard. Is that what that means? Keep reading. Verse 22. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Paul did not become, Paul didn't do as the Romans do while he was in Rome. No, Paul was Christ's ambassador who was sent to these people. That's what that means. That does not mean to be like the world to win the world. That is heresy. Okay? Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Here's where we get into it. Okay? Matthew 5. Verses 17 and 18. Matthew 5, verses 17 and 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill. Now, people who say that you got to keep the commandments, like uh, Mark the Messenger, which that video will be in the description box, because he's a perfect example and he's a black Hebrew Israelite saying that because of your skin color you're a chosen one heresy okay but guys like that said well you got to keep the Ten Commandments no what is Christ's fulfillment of the law entail let's continue for verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. We want verses 18 on to verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9. Verses 18 on to verse... Verses 8. 8 on to 14. Excuse me. The Holy Ghost, Lord is that spirit, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while well, as the first tabernacle was standing, the law, or the temple, whatever you want to say, okay? Which was a figure for the time then present, that dispensation, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices, that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Because, well, let's keep reading. Which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once, Catholic, into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Hebrews 10, verses 1 on verse 18 now. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of those things, 
can never with those sacrifices which they offer year offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Now see these antinomianist guys like the the idiot Elmer Fudd from New York say that the Old Testament sacrifices were objects of faith or whatever. No, the animal sacrifices were continual. Why? Because the blood of bulls and goats couldn't permanently wash away sin, as does the blood of Jesus Christ. Or else if they did, they would only have to offer them once. He did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. How? In the offerings of sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. Do you see how these antinomian free grace pond scum devils are twisting this now? Let's continue. For if they were for then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. And surprise, surprise, antinomianist free gracers. Um, being giving uh, heed to doctrines of devils and seducing spirits, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Verse 4. And this is how Christ fulfilled the law. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins on a permanent basis. Okay? Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared, for, uh, prepared me. And of course, the, the skin suit thing, you know, and dude, if you're going to bring that up, the Lord rebuke you, that has already been your argument about what you said and I said, okay, has already been uh, refuted, okay, and links will be in the description box for you, okay, all right. Uh, Wherefore he saith, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering, and burnt offering, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadest pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will. I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Get that? Okay? Under the law, you did animal sacrifices to cover your sins. But see, they had to be continually because if verse 4, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and go and blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Okay? They were continually offered. That's why Catholicism, the mother of harlots, with their mass, offering their little G God, you know, the way for God, every day. Okay? Christ fulfilled the law in that sacrament. This is nuts and bolts, basic milk stuff. But see, the antinomian is twisting it and blurring that thing. Okay? And they're turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. You see what they're doing? Let's continue. Verse 10. By the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And that sinful flesh was sanctified by the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? He did what no man could do. He kept the law perfectly. He never sinned. Henceforth, that flesh 
that Jesus Christ is come into was sanctified because he never sinned and he kept the law perfectly. Okay? That's how that works. Okay? All right? It says in Romans 8 that he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Uh, see, these guys turn flesh into God. When God was manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God became flesh. Flesh never became God. Unless you're an antinomian. Okay? Verse 10, by which we are, uh, are sanctified through the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. And see, Christ fulfilled that with the death, burial, and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross f with, from a lamb without spot. Okay? But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, Catholic, forever sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. That's why we're not killing animals today. Okay? When you sin, yes, Lord, please forgive me. You don't lose your salvation because it's not your salvation to lose. Okay? But see, a saint who sins is mortified, horrified by such. But see, the antinomian free gracer hardens you to make a mock at sin. Your grace, free gracer, is a license to sin. The Lord rebuke you, you foul devil. Okay? Now, Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Verses 13 under verse 22. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. Who hath made both one Jew, Gentile? And have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So being under the law to Christ, what does that mean? Remember Galatians 5.18? You are not under law, but under grace. We don't have to give animal sacrifices for when we sin. Why? Because we are trusting in that it is finished. The death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross is the sacrifice for my sin. We don't have to do it continually. That's what that means. That's what that means. Very simple. And see, these guys askew that. They blur. They defile and turn their the grace of God into their grace lasciviousness. Let's continue. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments containing ordinances for to make in himself of twain Jew and Gentile one new man so making peace. What are we reading to on verse 22? The close of the chapter. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. For through him we both have access 
by one capitalist spirit unto the Father. Because we have him within us. Okay? Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Saints, household of God. We are of his house. Okay? We belong unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Habitation of God. What does that mean? First Corinthians chapter three. 1 Corinthians chapter three, uh, 3. Uh, where is that? Um, verses 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capitalist spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man, including yourself, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And God does not dwell in temples made with hands today. Okay, are you getting this? All right. So we are under the law to Christ. What does that mean? We don't keep the law to stay saved or be saved, meaning we don't have to offer animal sacrifices. We also don't have to uh, adhere to the dietary restrictions. Done away in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 5. Read it yourself. Okay, and also the keeping of the Sabbath and stuff like that, okay, we don't have to do because that was to the Jew. The Sabbath was a sign unto the Jew, okay? That is not a required thing for salvation today, okay? The Pauline epistles show us that, all right? See, we saints trust in that it is finished. The death, burial, and uh, resurrection. The blood shed on the cross. Our faith is on Christ. In Christ. You fake gracers. You antinomious pond scum. Your faith is in yourself. In your faith. You are just belief. Oh. You are of your father the devil. Ye are your own God. Ye shall be like the most high. See, this what we're doing is what a devil could not do. Go through the scriptures to show you this. But all they can do is that, 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 that. Idiot. All right? Now, Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Well, the moral compass of the law. Remember, okay, People will bring up about, you know, it's like, well, you know, in Romans 13, which we're going to read, um, they said, well, Paul never talked about, you know, idolatry, you know, of having one God, like I said, in the Ten Commandments. Dude, have you ever read 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians? Okay. Have you ever read those books before in Scripture? Huh? No, you should. Because he deals with that quite a bit within the entirety of the books of 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Okay? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient, okay? All right? All right? That That's one I've been, uh, dealt with, where people say, well, Paul never mentioned about, you know, uh, having, you know, setting no false idols before me. Yes, he did. He talked about it in 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Okay? And the Sabbath. Sabbath is not a requirement to the Jew first and also to the Greek today, which is a Gentile, salvithically. Salvithically. Should a Hebraic Jew observe the Sabbath? That's up to them. It's not required for salvation. That's up to them. Okay? That's up to them. Okay? Romans 14 talks about this. Okay? That's what we're not supposed to judge people upon if they want to, if you were, hey, 
You want your day to, for the Lord to be on the on Sabbath on the Sabbath day? Knock yourself out, buddy. But the minute you come along saying it's a salvific requirement, it's heresy. The dietary restrictions have been absolved. First Timothy chapter four, one to five. Okay? It's not with rise, Peter, kill, and eat. He was talking about how the Gentiles are grafted in. It's not about the uh, uh, what you eat is cast out into the draught. Why? Because that is said before the death, burial, and resurrection. The law was still binding. It was said in context of observance to the law. Okay? See, th th see th this is what happens when you don't study to show yourself approved on the God, being a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But when you sit there to be entertained by these devils who curse, who are profane, who use sexual things like that, uh, justify all kind of nonsense, this is what happens. Okay? This is what happens. All right? All right? Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verses 4 on to verse 7. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who raised, who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. How are we dead to the law? Morally? Well, according to the antinomian, yes. And see, when you absolve the morality of thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, okay? Which is exact. And see, they do that so they can justify sin. Are we resolved of the morality that is in the law? Uh, have you read any of the Pauline epistles? Hmm? We are absolved from the legality, as it were, legalist, legalism, legality, is not found in Scripture. But the works of the law, we are absolved from pertaining to salvation, the conscience, being right with God, staying with Him and stuff like that. That's what we're set free from. That's what we're dead from! Keep reading now. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Wages of sin is death. What does this mean? We, the, uh, an expository thing on Romans 7 will be for you in the description box. Okay? Again, if you don't want to watch any of these things that are in the description box, go to hell and God loves you. Okay? A little G. Go ahead. Okay? And roll up another one, buddy. Okay? Let's continue. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What does that mean? We're not oldness of the letter, the Old Testament, the sacrifices for sins. And those things that Paul in the, his epistles that the Lord absolved. For example, the keeping of the Sabbath. It's not a requirement today. Find it in the Pauline epistles. The dietary restriction abolished. Found within the Pauline epistles. The going to a physical temple. Found in the Pauline epistles. Okay. See, in the Pauline epistles, God through Paul in the Pauline epistles gives us the doctrine to which we are to adhere to today in this dis dispensation. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, th th this is what happens when you don't rightly divide the word of truth and you fall for the heresy of these antinomious pond scum free gracers. This is what happens. Okay? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay. I, it's 
it's, you're, you know, you're right, but this, this is so simple. But we're seeing the fulfillment of Scripture before our eyes. Men are boasters, proud, lovers of their own self, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, or without natural affection. Lovers are their boasters. I'm saved by my own belief. All things are lawful for me. Yeah, deck the halls there, you heretic. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not no sin, known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. And through Christ, the law is fulfilled in the death, burial, and resurrection. And he lives within us and he guides us today in this dispensation within the Pauline epistles doctrinally. This does not mean that you forego the Old Testament. All things that were written for time were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans 15. Okay? This is not some bold stuff, people. But see, when you have been deluded into being your own standard, your own God, by just believe and receive, antinomianism, the morality of the law are we free from? Have you read the Bauline epistles? <laughs> Let's continue in uh, the beloved. Romans chapter 7, verses 12 unto the globe. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin. Again, you didn't know what sin was until God told you. It's written on in your hearts. Look at Abimelech. You know, he would, he took uh, Sarai, or Sarah was, as, and, you know, for his wife, and that's like, hey, you've taken a man's wife. And Abimelech's like, I, I, Lord, I, I, he, he, he said she was, I, 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 I don't know. Was that, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin. Working death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. So when you forego the morality of the law. Well, that, hey, man. Hey, let's eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. Do you see, are you beginning to see how grotesque how disgusting free grace antinomianism theology truly is you saw and the link for that will be in the description box you want to go ahead and look it up yourself go right ahead okay for we know that the law is spiritual but I am carnal sold under sin That which I do, I allow not. Sin. For what I would, that do I not. Not sin. For what I hate, sin, that do I. And dude, you watch some of these or listen to these disgusting free grace idiots. That They're contrary to what we just read. Because they're all about justifying it with their license to sin. I mean, they, 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 their speech be lengthy. Even the bloke of Blackpool, even though he he makes mistakes, because uh, he's a lost devil, even he, at least publicly, won't resort to dropping F-bombs regularly without any consequence. And I hate to say that guy because I hate that man with perfect hatred. I do. He is my enemy. He is Christ's enemy. But never mind about that. Okay? When you got a devil, it's a, again, again, an example. The self-theist 
who boasts about their LGBTQ nonsense and believe that uh, this is all millions and billions and trillions of years and that you evolved from a sniveling piece of snot into a monkey or whatever, when they have enough sense to look at the antinomian and be like, okay, you're claiming to be a Christian, but you're justifying things that that not even um, not even we self-theists do. And you're saying God, your God is okay with that? Well, God loves you unconditionally. You see how it works? Now then, it is no more I that do it. Oh wait, verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. See, these guys are blurring the distinction between the law kept for salvation versus the law adhering for morality. And they said, well, the Sabbath and the that done away with in the Pauline epistles. So the morality of the law is not to be adhered to. And like I said, it's, I mean, the things of the law that are not applicable for to us today, it's not a cherry-picking thing. They're clearly outlined within the Pauline epistles. You don't know that because you trust these idiots. You listen to them. Don't trust me. Don't trust man. This you can trust. See, so you got to rightly divide it. Because, see, these guys blend everything together and tell you that they're rightly dividing, which they are not. And when you blend everything together, God is ashamed of you. The whole of Scripture is written for you. Yes, it is. It's not all written to you. If you get nothing out of this video today, please take that away. Okay? Take that away with you. Okay? At least that. Let's continue. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Paul didn't want to sin. But, see, Paul couldn't stop sinning. See, another thing with these idiots that come around, you got to stop sinning. Uh, Paul missed that memo. He, he, <laughs> okay, Paul missed that one. Okay, let's continue. For the good that I would, I do not, not sin. But the evil which I would not, that I do, sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. Oogling at another woman, you married men. Oogling at another man, you married women. Hmm. I have in my mind the thought of foolishness of sin have done atrocious acts onto people who are my enemies. And I repent of that. Because vengeance belongs unto the Lord. But see, thought of foolishness is sin. For the good that I would I do not, not sin. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Verse 20, Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And you are soul and spirit right now are housed within this sagging sense. Paul is not distancing himself from sin. He's owning his sin but in its proper way. I find them a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. 
For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. The hidden man of the heart. Who is that inward man? In the saint, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So sin is relegated here. You read Romans chapter 8. This is where sin is. Flesh. Christ, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. That God in flesh could live the, his life perfectly according to the law, sanctifying that sinful flesh by keeping the law perfectly and never sinning, not even in thought, so he would be the perfect sacrifice for sin. See how that works? That That's scripturally expounded to you and judge not, okay? So shut up. All right? Oh, wretched man that I am. See, as long as you and I, our spirit and soul, are housed within this sagging sin suit, we cannot stop sinning. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. This is not Paul giving license to just do as whatever. Have you just read what we just read? Have you? Were you with that? Were you here when we say that uh, Paul's like, uh, that you know, don't do any sin? But yet we are going to. Okay? Romans 10, verses 1 on to verse 4. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. True knowledge, which is derived from true wisdom. Fear the Lord. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, which is by Grace through faith. Look, 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 look at this. Look at this. Okay. Look at this. Okay. Look at this. Oh wait, wait, wait. You can't see that. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Here, come on. Get to that again. Okay. Go into this thing again. Okay. All right. Look. Okay. By grace through faith. Okay. In some Christian belief systems. An antinomian is one who takes the principle of salvation by faith and uh, divine grace. They got it backwards. It's dependent on them. Scripture, by his grace, by grace through faith. These guys, the free grace, antinomianist, by faith themselves. Okay? I mean, you don't get no clearer than that, bro. You don't, okay? Give me a break. All right? Give me a break. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. I'm saved because I just believe and receive with no brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, or calling upon His name, which they all call works. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God because to you antinomium free gracers you're the greater calling upon the lesser to bring him down for you and you may have your best life now you wicked devils. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Well yes you kept the law. Well, I go, I kept the, you know, like the Catholic, the mother of harlots, where this nonsense comes from. I went to church. I've been baptized. I had the cookie. I drank the wine. I give money to the poor. I do that. I will, I will, I will, 
I will. Acts 15. Oh yeah, boy. Oh yeah, this, 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 you, Acts 15. Acts 15. Verse 1. Acts 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Meaning, keeping the law that was fulfilled in the death, burial, and resurrection in order to stay saved and be right with God. Meaning, still offering the sacrifices. Meaning, observing the Sabbath and dietary restriction. Which James, in Acts 21, botched himself. Okay? Our beloved brother James, who wrote the epistle of James. Okay? Acts 15 now, verses 5 unto 11. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses as for pertaining to salvation, meaning keeping the dietary, the Sabbath, offering the turtle doves or whatever for sin. See, and see, that's what these guys do. Okay. They blur that distinction. We do not keep the law to the day to stay saved, be saved, be right with God. But to reject the morality of the law? Like I said, we're going to look at Romans 13. First uh, Timothy 4. The dietary restrictions have been abolished to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, we already read that, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. Which comes first by what? His grace. Now therefore, now therefore why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Not, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Works of the law. Romans 13. Romans 13. Verses 9 on to verse 11. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Hmm. What, 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 thou shalt have no false idols before me. Or false gods. Or, or thou shalt have no other gods before me. Where is that, Brad? Are you really that stupid? Have you not read? First and Second Corinthians. <laughs> okay, dude. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And that thou shalt not bear false witness. You got an NIV? Check it. You got, uh, I don't know about this, the LSD version. Is that in there? Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. 
Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. God so loved that he gave. God's love is there for you to have. But see, you gotta, gotta be broken. Man. You gotta take responsibility and not hide under the umbrella that we're all sinners. You gotta take responsibility because you put them on the cross. And you know what? You need the hell scared out of you. Because the antinomian, free grace, pond scum, devil, wicked heretics have no fear of God before their eyes. Don't prove me wrong when you got guys like Tom and his little motley crew of devils who brazenly curse, make references to fornication, adultery, drunkenness, and turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. You going to tell me that you free gracers fear God. You're God Satan, sure, but the God who is Eat and drink for tomorrow you die, buddy. God loves you. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Yes, today we are one, place, one step closer to the redemption of the purchased possession. 1st Timothy chapter 1 we're almost done verses 7 on to verse 11 <laughs> desiring to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, and for, uh, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for menslayers. For the, it wasn't made for a righteous man, meaning referencing to the sacrifices that needed to be kept. Okay? Um, not killing, not stealing, not lying. Come on. Use a little common sense to what's being spoken about here. Okay? And these things here, where animal sacrifices had to be made. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites, but also those who know better, yet mingle with people who they shouldn't. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing, any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And see, you people who do not get caught up when this dispensation ends at the great white throne of judgment, you are going to be judged by the law. We are not judged by the law because Christ he, he is our hope. He is the sacrifice for sin. He died for sins once. Hence, we trust on him. See, the antinomian blurs morality with legality. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Psalm 37 Verses 1 on to verse 9, and we will be done. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass, and wither as the green herb. Their foot shall slide in due time. Trust in the Lord and do good. And remember, we are saved on two good works, not for salvation, but to be ambassadors for Christ. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Okay? And heretics will take this as like, well, 
for covetousness. No, the Lord abhors covetousness. If your desire is to live as the Lord would have you to live according to the scriptures, the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. But if your desires are earthly, sensual, devilish, you've got a problem. Commit thy way unto the Lord, explain, verse 4, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Remember, this was written under the law, a different dispensation. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. I noticed that that idiot from England, the bald-headed Unitarian guy, is growing of course why because he's of the world and he speaks of the world cease from anger and forsake wrath fret not thyself in any wise to do evil be angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath anger resteth in the bosom of fools Angry at thy brother without any cause. Cause, of course, in context to scripture. For evildoers sh uh, shall be. Uh, wait, wait, you know what? R verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not be thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, like uh, making the grace of God into lasciviousness. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, just to find sin. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. That is going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I hope this helps. I really do. Uh, I hope this uh, makes you aware of the stuff. Free grace, free grace people, these devils are antinomianists. They are their own standard. And they blur distinction to justify themselves. They are of the devil, they are wicked, and I do not believe any one of these guys are saved. Because when you turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, and remember, brother, we, we, we examine ourselves, therefore we examine others by the same standard we judge ourselves. We are to be fruit inspectors. But if judgment begin at the house of God, and see, they they refuse to do judgment. So that's gonna be it. Thank you for watching if you do. Please keep us in your prayers. This is a very heavy month. We we need all the help we can get. Please, <laughs> Father, okay? Please keep us in your prayers. Um, pray for one another. And thank you to all of you, our dear brethren. We love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.